I'm so happy again talking to you. I do hope that this video will find expression in your ministries. And knowing fully that whatever I'm doing today, the Lord Jesus Christ enables me to do that. And I am doing this with all sense of humility. I'm just here to share with you some of the things I've done behind the scene to achieve excellence in live stream production. Trust me, uh, it is not quantity, but it's actually quality that matters a lot. Now, what people out there cares for is a very clean, loud and crisp uh, on online production, live streaming, actually, live streaming. If they own their smartphone, they should, their phone should be able to project the audio loud and clear. If they put on any form of headphone at all, it should give them a, this sense of being in that space. And how can somebody who is 10,000 kilometers away from this place be as if this in this auditorium? So, which is why later on I'm going to show you the type of audience my camera audience might be used in this in this space, right? So, if anybody is going to hear with any type of earphone devices at all, they should be satisfied. If it is professional headphone like this one. You should actually translate uh, whatsoever you mix down from the broadcast, either from the broadcast end or from the media end or from the front of house console. Whatever you do should be able to give you a CD prototype kind of production. When you hear this live stream, it's actually more like you are listening to a finished product. I remember the way I am wired, right? I know a lot of you, a lot of you out there will not see sense in what I'm saying. A lot of you out there will not really think it possible, but I tell you everything is really possible right now. Every digital mixer has basic processing. I'm talking about EQ compressor gates. So it is like more of your understanding of how to optimize these things that translate to the online. So let me just quickly share with you five basic things I do on front of house console if I am also taking live streaming decisions if i'm taking broadcast audio decisions five things so the first thing i do is to make sure that my input source if it is mono i leave it as mono if it is stereo i connect it as stereo let me give you an example whatever is in the effect pedal is exactly what i am capturing right and then the two channels are panned hard left hard right Although depending on how wide my stereo imaging is, right? So uh, all the keyboards, all the um, audience mic, play, backtrack, stems, and everything that is stereo, I leave it as stereo. So in that way, when we capture this thing and just push the feathers like that, once it goes online, it is truly represented like that. So that is the first thing I do. So the second thing I never compromise about is the, the, the audience mic. Like I stated this in my previous videos, that your audience mic actually does five things. Again, five things. Number one, the excitement of the audience is represented. Every hall has its, number two, every hall has its own acoustic property. It's also represented in the hall. Number three, I also, doubles audience mic as my natural reverb right especially in 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 a hall that is highly reverberative that is highly reflective i use natural reverb with the artificial reverb that is in the plugin so that's number three then number four every applause every shouting and every every other thing is represented then the stereophonic imaging of this hall of any given hall is also represented in the audience mic so you see that is why you need not to overlook the advantages of dropping your audience mic placing your audience mic where it needs to be then the third aspect is i understand that various country has uh, challenges with the their internet broadband and bandwidth some of you all are operating on 5g right and some people are still on 4g so for some of you that your broadband is very wide, 
that you can even stream 4K. So it means there's a limitless range of your audio resolution you have to set in any given um, uh, live streaming softwares that you have. Of course, you know there are some form of encoding that happens, right? Up to today, a lot of people still stream audio at 128 um, kilobyte per second. So this is totally unaccepted. Like I said previously, whatever we do in church or any function is classified under two headings. We have music and we have speech application. This for music, the 128 cannot fly. Actually, 128 kilobyte per second cannot fly because it's going to chop off some high frequency content. Yeah. But for speech, it may fly. So which is why anytime you are streaming, make sure your audio resolution is at the highest it can take. Make sure it can take. So do not let your internet service provider be your threshold and reasons why you can't uh, stream quality audio online. So the fourth one is I still, a lot of people too, still do that. That whatsoever goes out is still mono. Mono, mono. How many ears do you have for crying out loud? And how many ears do you have? And do you know that the, the two ears you have are not wired together? This one thinks differently from this, but everything is summed together into a reasoning box. So which is why when something happened here, I, I turn to this direction. Why? Because this ear is not connected to this. So that's exactly what happens. I'm sure some of you are really ignorant of this. But please, again, try not to stream. Try not to stream your content on mono uh, platform. It doesn't really represent everything. So imagine that you have one of the most expensive mixer in the whole world. After the engineers have done a lot of stuff, They've done a lot of tweaking, they've done a lot of processing, they've done a lot of maybe studio grade one processing and it gets to your desk. And then at that time, you now, you now choose to sum up left and right and send it as mono. I'm sure some of the crazy uh, ideologies, some of the reasons you give is that ah, a lot of people use smartphones. If you pan left, if you do stereo, there's some content that will be lost. It's a lie. It's a lie. Technically, yes, technically speaking, there's nothing, we don't have so much of mono uh, elements. Yes, let me give an example with uh, lead, lead, lead microphones, like lead microphones. Yes, you know when you speak into a microphone, it first of all comes out from your last speaker, whether you spread them left and right or you bounce them, it comes out from one source. And that sound that comes out actually interact with the room reflection, room acoustic. So you, on the receiving side, will not hear this direct sound. What you are hearing is more of the room reflection. Obviously, again, because your ears are separated, you will hear stereo sound coming to you. Why can't I like replicate this kind of stuff online, right? So if you adhere to these five rules, your internet, um, your live streaming content will be very, sweet will be very lovely and i'm going to share with you what transpires yesterday it's something so hard it is something so hard for you to believe because the precision is very true to be real right i'm sure with the advent of um with the advent of uh, the virtual recording with overdub with post-production with a lot of garnishing then you read share or repost videos later a lot of you will just say no no these guys have gone through some post-production but i'm telling you uh, like again the way i am wired is i want to achieve by the grace of god in this lifetime all the processes that happen from your recording to overdub to post-production to finishing and to mastering these things are what i want to achieve real time each time I am doing live sound I, and I am streaming, provided I have a very good internet and everything is connected. So that's why every day that I sit with multi-track project for other people, at that time, I'm actually practicing. At that time, I'm actually rehearsing my mixed precisions. 
and the things I do in the post-production are the things I want to bring in back real time. One of the things I do in the post-production is more like, okay, it's number one, drum replacements. Sometimes when we capture live drum, I don't, I, I seldom use the sound. Why? Because of what the modern CCM music has offered us, right? So I do a lot of drum replacement. That is number one. Then number two, I play with a lot of parts. That's why I am not just a sound engineer. I'm actually a sound design engineer. So if at time T, the main keys or the aux is not giving me the right part for my um, for my sound, I do a back. I do a kind of um, round trip round trip connection between my laptop and the mixer. I get any VST software that has worthy pad and I play alongside them blending and send it to them and also send it to the front of house and exactly that's exactly what you're going to hear in this um, uh, broadcast I did at uh, Glorious Light International Ministries Lilongwe, Malawi so these are the things I also do to ensure the sound online and in-house is is clean now another question that you might want to ask me that how is it possible to achieve a good sound in-house and good sound online without anything knowingfully that we are we have an acoustic space that we are dealing with which constantly is fighting us to tweak eq to sever the acoustic yeah um you know digital mixers nowadays come with tons of matrices so the matrix is a mixer within a mixer that is is used to like solve a lot of uh, buses right the requirement we have for the online is quite different from the requirements we have for um uh, front of house in-house the a mic can sound terribly in-house right but it will sound sweet online so you see when an engineer is really faced with this kind of challenges, with this kind of things, uh, puzzle to solve, that is when they start fabling with um, uh, a parametric EQ to, to make sure the mic sound well in-house. So by doing that, it has already compromised the online um, sound. So what do I do? I spend so much time to tone my room. T-O-N-E, to tone my room. And how do I tone my room? I make sure also what comes out from my PA system is equivalent to what I am hearing real time. So I do a form of A and B comparison. Sometimes I spend like two days to tone a speaker. So reason being that whatsoever I hear here that is true, let the speaker also faithfully translate the same. I spend so much time to tone my speakers. So the speaker output from wherever it is, the speaker might be like 35 meters away from where the FOH uh, console is, right? So I know the sound from there mixed with the acoustic and by the time it gets to me, it becomes a second sound. So even from here, 35 meters away, I should hear a sound that is equivalent to a uh, headphone. So that is also what I do real time. So whatever I mix here also favors the front of house. Again, a lot of you also have issues toning your tops and your subwoofers. Sometimes what the energy you put in your own subwoofer configuration is too much, such that little push here is already too much in the low frequency. And when you allow the sound goes online like that, it is very tiny because your subwoofer is already doing so much. So when I'm talking about speaker toning, it cut across the line arrays and the subwoofer. Whatsoever come out must be equal to these headphones, right? So they are my own tricks, you know. You might not find this on the internet. Now, the second thing I do is, okay, I am here at the same time, I am also monitoring online. So this screen here represents what is going out real time. And then I have another headphone, which is different from this. So this is my front of house headphone to get the right precision. 
in my front of her mix and online sound then this is my online monitoring headphone this is a bluetooth system that that has so much of um noise cancellation because sometimes you, you say how, how can i get good precision in in a joyfully noise environment i can't say noisy environment though people are actually making joyful noise you know in praise and worship so how can i get good precision when people are joyful in the noise they are making to god right so there's a noise can cancellation immediately i put in i activate the noise cancellation so it isolates what is happening in in any hall acoustically so then it gives me almost 85 percent of uh precision from what i am uh, streaming online so again whatsoever i get from here i compare this output with this output what again what is the missing link again like i said your internet is 100 percent you are streaming on 5g so it means you can go anyhow in your audio and visual resolution without buffering without any restrictions right so if you are swimming at that kind of platform then we can do a again and b comparison so what i mix in-house should be equal to what is going out online so again can you see they are not cheap headphones so these are some of the things i really invest on why because these are my my third ears right a lot of you guys really don't want to don't really uh love using headphone in front of us so a lot of you always give reasons that oh we already have speaker and so it is rubbish to use headphone remember i am not in this realm of normal sound right when you build your sound to a level for me that's a starting point so i'll build it from there a true series of studio grade one into the final mix that when you hear the sound it's almost the same thing with uh, people that did multi-track and went through production processes into achieving their finished product my aim is when i listen to william mcdowell the way he sound that when you go to apple music you, you go to youtube music and you stream and hear everything i want to achieve the same thing right so the missing link is actually like okay what are the things they do inside these things that brings out this sound that the things that i will fellowship with the music team with the choir and teach them right so there's a there's a third thing that I, i'm actually introducing beyond having the main keys the auxiliary keys there is another auxiliary keys that really doesn't use normal keyboard all his keys are stacked they are purely midi connection this guy the third guy is swimming in the world of vst virtual studio studio uh instruments with a lot of plugins that will create those kind of atmosphere remember when you are creating stems for any project there are a lot of stack keyboards tones a lot of pads a lot of stuff that you use to create that stems and immediately you inject the stems to your live recording it is full so you see those stems you create because it is human that create those stems so it is possible for you to be playing those stems that you created real time and i send multiple output to the front of house maybe you are using a multi-channel sound card maybe four channel output or six channel output or eight channel output i'm just telling you ahead of time for free actually so you can you can actually have a multiple output uh, sound card that maybe the first two might just be strings the second one might just be normal loop that is gonna when i say normal loop again loop pass loop loop pass loop you know sorry you know this our praise and worship loop i think was first heard from is it in yanya one uh, contemporary guy like that in nigeria and for over 10 years now we are still using it so a lot of you guys are not innovative at all you don't want to there are a lot of things that you can do in the praise and worship let me just use praise loop each time like <laughs> so a lot of you are not tired even when songs are different your loop is constant it it is boring in fact my interest will even go 
a song is different you just bring that look like that <laughs> i understand that a town hall different <laughs> i don't want to complete it right so loop there are loop and there are loops so when again when this vst guy that is the second auxiliary keys right dive in the world in the in, in the world of uh, uh loop element percussive loop element that is obtainable in our current ccm space imagine him also getting doing those arrangement loop element real time services as in worship is happening real time this guy is busy dragging this from his computer before you know he, he arranged this he has gotten maybe he has done a tap tempo de uh, delay no, no tap tempo to understand the tempo of a song and he has gotten it he pushed it from there he pushed the stuff to the drama i'm telling you about something that is happening real time like i always tell my friends technology should make us to be proactive technology should actually increase our natural intelligence technology should not replace our natural god given natural intelligence right technology has so much ai artificial intelligence so let's just go into this technology and enable this technology to shape in us to make us be on top of our games i'm sure what i've shared with you might just be a sound for 2024 where we have vst uh, instrumentalist when i say vst he's in his own space midi connection he might have stack of one two three four midi keyboard everything wired together any anything maybe the, for the first keys it's loop you can just quickly play something into a computer and before you know loop is established the second one might just be strings pad and some other at ambience the third one can be effect like all those risers all those bells water sound thunder everything is gotten in this uh, third keyboard then the other one can be then your your pad and maybe atmospheres right so anything is possible in this life now back to our um space by the time you bring in drum replacement real time and now bring in the guy that is doing the stems real time into your live worship session and you get these things unhindered uninterrupted and you stream it online it's going to be like look like actually finishing product in summary you see this hardware has so much signature that it adds to your left and right that you can't get it in your door maybe you should try this experiment this sunday do a lot of stuff in your system and record it into your stick the same thing you did here you should try and replicate it in your door and see if you are going to get the same answer if you are going to get hear the same sound the hardware actually has a lot it does into um, our own recording which is why up to today so many people still prefer analog mixer with hardboard processors because again that is another um, that's another level of mixing right where a lot of people love that kind of old school mixer now to be continued god bless you